Number 73. Nitrogen monoxide, which is NO, reacts with hydrogen, which is H2, according to the following equation. So we got 2NO plus 2H2 yields N2 plus 2H2O. Now, what would the rate law be if the mechanism for this reaction were this? Okay. So whenever they're talking to you and saying that there's a mechanism for a certain reaction, right? The mechanism is the step-by-step -step instructions to get you from A to B. So basically what a mechanism is, is like when you use, you know, GPS, right? To get from, you know, somewhere that you haven't been before, right? From your house to somewhere you haven't been before. The overall, the overall reaction would be from point A, to point B. So from your house to, I don't know, the movie theater, right? And, you know, just me and you, right? Even if I know where I'm going, I still got to put that GPS on. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. Anyway, I guess I love being told what to do. <laughs> oh, shoot. Anyway, um, yeah. Does anybody else do that? Like I I'm, I'm literally going to, you know, somewhere that I've been, I don't know, 50 times, but I have to put it on. I just love it. I, I don't know. Is that just weird? Anyway, let's continue, right? So anyway, um, so yeah, so from my house to the movie theater. But now, in between, you got tons of different steps, you know, turn right at, or whatever, whatever Siri or whoever, I don't know, is it Alexa? Alexa is talking to you? Next turn at, left, you know, whatever. But anyway, um, those are your mechanisms, quote unquote. Those are your, you know, your, your steps, your actual steps. So step number one would be, I don't know, make a right turn at some street and then make a left turn. And now you're at the movie theater. So that's basically what a mechanism is. It's all of the steps to get you from your point A to point B. Now we want to find out the rate law from those steps. And just know that if they give you out mechanisms, each one of these is a elementary step or elementary reaction. Elementary reaction. I like to call them steps, but sometimes you might see elementary reactions. So you got two elementary reactions here. The first one is when 2NO plus H2 turns into N2 plus H2O2. This is the slow step. That's pretty important. We'll go over that in a little bit. And then you have your second elementary step, right after you make that hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, boom, it's going to react with another H2 and you get H2O. This is a fast step. So maybe I'll highlight that in green. But overall, if we took these two and we added them together and we cancel things out on opposite sides, H2O2 is exactly the same as H2O2, that gets canceled. Goodbye, goodbye. Nothing else on the product and the reactant side are the same, so I can't cancel, but I have two H2s on the same side. Oh, two H2s. And if I add them together, if I add all the individual steps of my mechanism, I will get my overall reaction, right? How fun is that? But anyway, that's basically how you find an overall reaction. An overall reaction comes from its mechanism parts or the elementary reactions. Keep in mind that an elementary reaction is a single step. Now we just want to find out the rate law for this reaction. Okay. The thing here is that if I got two elementary steps, which I have here, how am I going to know which one is going to be used for the rate law. Is it just gonna be the first one? Is it just gonna be the second one? Maybe it's a combination of both. The idea here relies on what's going on as far as how fast and how slow the reaction goes. Now my first step, so maybe I'll say that here, my first step was by definition in this mechanism, it was the slow step. And if something is slow, right? We kind of talked about this, you know, chapters ago, right? Somewhere in your stoichiometry chapter where you talked about 
the limiting reagent, right? You had an excess reagent and you had a limiting reagent. The limiting reagent is always the one that slows the reaction down because that's going to be used up. The same thing here. If you have a slow step, that's the rate limiting step. If your rate, how fast a reaction is going to go, is limited by this step, you can't go any faster until after that reaction. So the idea here is that if your slow step is the first step, which we do have here, your rate law is going to come from how fast you can use these reactants. You're using them very slowly. So if this is going super, super, super slow, it doesn't matter what's coming afterwards because this is the slowest step. So if your first step is the slowest step, the rate law will come from this elementary step. Element, I always get confused as to how to spell elementary. Elementary, from this elementary step. And let's make that centered because that's just, that's just who I am. <laughs> okay. So now, if we're talking about rate laws from elementary steps or elementary reactions, um, they're very similar to the rate law for what we know, but it's just a little bit different. The rate law for an elementary step is this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say, hey, we can use this if we know that it's an elementary step. Rate equals K. So rate equals the rate constant. That's nothing, you know, that's nothing uh, different. Times the concentration of the reactants. That's nothing different. But the only thing that's different is now I can raise it to my coefficients of that elementary step. Back then, you know, we were probably only given a random overall reaction. I didn't specifically know that, you know, was that only a one-step reaction? Was that a two-step or three-step reaction? But if they're classifying it as a mechanism, and each one of them are definitely elementary steps, you can raise it to its coefficients. So the elementary step that we care about is the slow one. And the slow uh, reaction is reaction number two. Sorry, reaction number one. 2NO plus H2 yields N2 plus H2O2. So let's use this for this slow step. Nobody cares about the fast step because that's not the rate limiting. That's not the slowest step. So let's go for it. Rate equals K times the concentration of the reactants. Let's see, for that specific step, I have an NO, so that's going in there. So let's put that in there, NO. And then I have H2. So let's do that. And now the only thing is that for each one of them, you're going to raise it to their coefficients, because it's only coming from that one step. So let's see, NO had a two coefficient in the front, so I'm gonna take my NO, and I'm gonna raise it to the second power. H2 had a one in front, so you can put the one up here, but it doesn't really matter. Anything raised to the first itself, and that's the answer here. What was the rate law? for this general reaction, it's this. And if, actually, can I copy this? I don't know, let's see. If I put this up here, right, as my rate law for the overall reaction, look how it doesn't match, right? This is NO2, this part matches, but there's only, there's two H2s, but I don't raise this to the second. Keep in mind that Overall reactions do not have to abide by the coefficient rule. But if you are specifically saying that they are elementary steps and it's coming from an elementary reaction, then it has to abide by the um, coefficient rule. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. 
Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you in more questions. Thank you so much for the support throughout, you know, this journey thus far. My brother and I, we really do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And we really hope that we're giving back great educational content. Uh, keep studying hard. I'm always believing in you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye.